Our study, which was recently published in JAMA, um, titled Breast Cancer Screening Unit Using Tomosynthesis in Combination with Digital Mammography, uh, showed very similar results. Our study showed, uh, uh, was an evaluation of over 450,000 patients. 281,000 were with digital mammography alone, and 173,000 were with tomosynthesis added. We designed the study so that after implementation, we measured um, uh, or we collected cases until December 31, 2012. Uh, and depending on the site of implement, sorry, depending on the time of implementation, we captured the patients um, who had digital mammography one year prior. We had 13 different institutions. We had both academic and community uh, settings, and uh, all sites were early adopters of tomosynthesis. We included sites that had a screening volume projected greater than 5,000 cases. Our study was retrospective. Um, and we gather data from each site, including uh, recall rate, cancer detection rate, positive predictive value for recall, and biopsy. Positive predictive value for recall is the number of patients from a screening mammogram, how many we were recalled uh, that ended up having cancer. And the positive predictive value for biopsy means of the patients who ended up having a biopsy, how many were positive. And we also looked at both the types of cancers, whether they were invasive or in situ. So where are we? Um, we uh, need to do more research to figure out what types of patients might benefit the most with tomosynthesis. We need to look at patient level uh, data. As I mentioned before, our study really uh, went through population data. So we, uh, knowing the ages of the patients and the density of the breasts will be helpful in determining who might most benefit from imaging with tomosynthesis. Finding out the interval cancers, the cancers that uh, become clinically palpable in between screens, those uh, finding out which patients have those and whether tomosynthesis is, is helpful in those types of patients, um, and understanding our false negatives. What are the cancers that we're, cancers that we're missing um, on tomosynthesis? In the second round of screening, likely the uh, number of cancers are going to go down a little bit because we will have uh, picked out all the prevalent cancers, the cancers that exist in the population that we didn't see with the 2D mammograms. It will be interesting to see what our cancer detection rate is in the second time around. And we need a more detailed evaluation of the types of cancers that we're picking up. Are we picking up cancers that aren't clinically significant, or are we really helping uh, improve survival by, by finding cancers that are small and treatable? Um, and again, that goes into the survival benefit. We also need to um, understand the role of the synthesized or generated 2D image in tomosynthesis and, and whether we can confidently drop that 2D uh, exposure. So in summary, uh, there is scientific evidence supporting the use of tomosynthesis, and it's definitely building. We're finding more cancers. They're more conspicuous, and um, it's leading to an increase in cancer detection, uh, while at the same time, which is unique to tomosynthesis, decreasing the number of false positives or the, or the number of people who have to come back unnecessarily. And both of those metrics yield a higher positive predictive value. Um, our report suggests that it really benefits all tissue types, although um, in our study we really needed to evaluate that further and plan to in the near future. Um, and, and not just in screening, but tomosynthesis helps the radiologist in the diagnostic setting. It helps um, improve our lesion localization and increases our pretest probability of a lesion being benign or malignant.